first successful 3D printed parts on my Fortis 400MC. Welcome to 3D Accuracy, where I'll talk about 3D printing, 3D product design, and 3D injection and die cast mold design. It's actually on the last layer, right at the end of the build. Now that I have the machine up and running, I've calibrated it, have it dialed in perfectly, and just printing two small sample parts just to see how they look. So it has less than a minute or so. Ah, that should be the end of it. There we go. You can see all the all the calibration parts I printed to make sure I had the printer dialed in. These are failed parts over here in the right hand corner. These parts here are parts that failed and these are two good parts right there. Two sample parts. So, oh, I'm excited. Wonderful to have the first now, I have to be careful because this is very hot in here, 90 degrees Celsius. So I don't want to keep the phone in there very long. Ah, look at how clean those parts look. Aren't they beautiful? Ah, all the calibration, dialing it in, getting it perfect so that the two print heads, you see there's two print heads in there. One on the left is model, one on the right is support, right up here. There's support, there's model material, and they have to be calibrated so that the distance between them on an XY plane is perfect and the Z plane is perfect. So when it toggles, it lays down the right amount of materials in the right places. That's what all this calibration fuss was about. So, okay, now I'm going to stop this and take off my gloves and take that out of here. Here's the build sheet out of the machine, this transparent build sheet, and you can see what the system does is it builds a model with the ABS, with the model material, and this white line, this very faint white line, is the support material. And there's two tracks, like a road, and you want to find the setting, the numbers, where the white support material is perfectly centered between the two rails that make the road in an X and a Y direction. And then you just plug those numbers into the machine and it, and it moves the head. It, it, it calibrates the tips in relationship to each other. And then you do the same with the Z axis also. You print uh, it prints a layer of support material on top of this little box here in the center and you can see I have little tiny pieces that's well, you can barely see them because they're white <laughs> let me see I can't pick it up it's so it's very small you see it but you measure the thickness of that and it should be seven thousandths which is what the layer height is on this particular tip for this particular material. Uh, but you see those parts, oh, they came out nice. They came out very nice. Lots of small detail in there. Perfect, perfect. Love that, love that. Okay, now you see these were the failed parts. This is one that, um, uh, when did I do this one? This one was the one we did when I purchased the machine. And you can see how rough the ABS material is. That'll oftentimes happen, and you can see the little bit of bubbling in there if the material is wet, if the material is damp. It must be dry in order to print cleanly. Now, I dried the material. You see here, it looks pretty good. But then as it got over in this direction, it got kind of crumbly. And that's because you here here's the tip 
and you see, oh, can it focus in on that little tiny hole? Anyway, the tip, the tip is no good any longer. So I took, I took this tip out, focus there. I took this tip out and put a new tip in and that cured that problem because the material was dry when I did this, but the tip was no good. And that, that'll also happen when the tips are not, uh, not functioning properly. So you see much, much better results with clean tips, with clean tips. And black, it's interesting, but black shows all the imperfections more than any other material because it reflects the light. It's shiny and it reflects the light. If it's white, you don't see little tiny imperfections like you do with a black material. So, very good, success. Finally have the machine running, all calibrated in, ready to print parts. Now, the interesting thing with this machine, when you want to print in different layer thicknesses, like right now I have a 12 thousandths tip in this machine, and it's made for printing at a 7 thousandths layer thickness, 0 0.007 thousandths of an inch. If I want to go to 5 thousandths, or go to 10 or 13 thousandths, different layer thicknesses, I have to put in different tips. The, di the tips are calibrated such that you need, a, you can't use that same tip for printing different layer thicknesses. Unlike my Fortis 250MC over there across the shop, it will use the same tip and it just just the amount of material in the flow to compensate for the different layer thicknesses. So a little easier to do on that machine, but a little bit more sophisticated on this machine because you can print other materials also. Like I'll, it'll print polycarbonate as an example, or nylon, and I'll have different tips for different layer thicknesses for each material. So ah, it's a little bit of a hassle to swap those tips out all the time. <laughs> but you get a lot of flexibility with this printer. So I'm really happy with the first print. Uh, that's very, very encouraging. Now I can do some larger parts. I just wanted to make sure I can get the machine going and I can trust it. But before I do that, the next thing I want to do is now that I know the printer is up and functioning properly, I'm going to close this up. I'm going to put all the uh, side panels back on the printer. And from the other side here, you see I have all this open from when I was working on the machine. And I've positioned the battery, I have to put the panels on the back, run the cables through the panels, and then I'll move this printer back up into place, and that'll be the end of playing around inside of it for a while. I hope. <laughs> I'd rather be making parts with it than repairing it, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just glad to have it finally working. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you're ever in need of 3D product design, 3D injection mold design, 3D die cast mold design, or 3D printed prototypes or production parts, please feel free to contact me. You can find contact information in the video description. I look forward to hearing from you and to being of service to you. Thank you for watching. As always, I appreciate it. See you on 3D Accuracy's next video.